today I'm interviewing Lauriane Magné on um, Sapphires. She's a wholesale uh, gemstone dealer in Montreal. And so she's going to do a little deep dive with us on everything in terms of sapphires. Hi, nice to see you again. <laughs> yeah, so I guess the very first thing that we're going to start with is really going to be um, the different variety of sapphires we have. Mm -hmm. Because, um, I don't know, I feel like I repeat it all the time, but I really love them for the fact that they come in like multiple, multiple colors. Okay, so what we can see in sapphires is that you can have all the colors of the rainbow. Um, all the colors except one, and that is the red variety. The red is reserved for ruby. Sapphire and ruby are part of the same family. The red is for ruby, and all the other colors, so blue, green, yellow, pink, all the other colors you can think so are sapphires. Um, as you can see here, I put a few colors together, and you can see you have some pink, you have some blue, you have some bourgogne, mm -hmm. uh, fancy yellow, and you can even have some party or bicolor sapphire, as you call them. You can have one sapphire that is yellow, uh, with a little bit of blue and a little bit of green in it. You also have some sapphires, you know, from Montana, you have some sapphires from Nigeria, Sri Lanka, uh, Myanmar. You can find them almost all over the world. Yeah. And are certain colors reserved for certain areas or not so much? You do have some er areas that are specialized in certain type of color, but you will always find different colored sapphires everywhere. So let's say uh, Madagascar, Ilakaka, then you'll most likely find pink sapphires. Okay. But you can also find blue ones and green ones. Um, if you uh, think about the Kashmir mm -hmm. and you have a name, uh, the name of the sapphire that is named Kashmir because it was found in Kashmir, that's going to most likely be blue. Um, as you can see, you can also have some lilas, some soft yeah. pink ones, uh, you can have colorless, colorless yeah. sapphires that are also used to replace diamonds sometimes yeah. for the clients. Very as an good option. diamond alternative. Uh huh. And it's a, it's a gemstone that's hard, so it's a 9 on the moss scale. Yeah. That means that it's also part of the four precious gemstones. Um, so it's ruby, sapphire, emerald and diamond. And so sapphire is one of the big four. If you count the family, it's mm -hmm. two of the big four. <laughs> yeah. In terms of the colors, are there some colors that are worth more than others? Yes. So if you see here, I have a little chart made by Lotus Gemology. Uh, it's a lab that is specialized in sapphires. So as you can see, one of the most precious colors, and mm -hmm. I don't have it here as an example, but it would be the Patparacha. Yeah. And it's a special color because you have to have a pink, a good saturation, but also with a touch of orange. Yeah. If you don't have the touch of orange, it's not paparaccia. If you have orange without the touch of pink, it's not paparaccia. Mm -hmm. So I would say that's the biggest one, the rarest. Uh, then you have the blue variety, and you can find uh, royal blue, velvet. Uh, you don't have the cashmere here, here, but you also have the cashmere. Cornflower blue, peacock, all those are with good saturation, a mm -hmm. good blue, a good color, good transparency, uh, and not black. Because as soon as uh, the color is too dark to see, yeah. then the value drops a lot. Lastly, um, this is only for the ruby, but since it's the same family, they put it there. Uh, you have the pigeon blood and the royal red that you often mm -hmm. see are the most precious in ruby. Mm -hmm. um, the closest in sapphire would be the hot pink. And those are more expensive, let's say, than the pastel one. Yeah, and I think the joke is, is if you're buying, you want to buy as a sapphire, and if you sell, you want to sell as a ruby. Exactly. <laughs> because the exactly. prices are going to vary. Right if you're going to buy a red sapphire, don't. It, it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. It's going to be either a ruby, and you're going to resell it, or keep it as is, as a precious ruby, or a pink sapphire, or any other yeah. color. There's also different cuts. I don't know yes. if you wanted to see this yeah, uh, we can right talk now. About cuts. So, what I showed you most uh, in the uh, color, different colors here, is uh, faceted. Mm -hmm. So they all have little facets on them. Sometimes it's 47, sometimes it's uh, 300 facets on the same stone. Wow. And that helps okay. um, determine the brilliance, the reflection of the light, uh, depending on the color, if it's too deep, too dark, or too light, and you want to darken it, or you want to lighten it up. So if you have more facets, it's essentially going to lighten it? Um, yeah, it depends on okay. the cut also. Okay. So if you want to lighten it, uh, you're maybe not going to do a round with a deep uh, mm -hmm. pavilion. You're going to okay. maybe do a rectangular cut with a shallow pavilion, just to lighten it up. Okay, because I guess the concept is like the deeper, the more material, the more opaque and dark it's going to be. Exactly. Okay, that makes exactly. sense. Yeah. And then you have cuts that are cabochon, so it's a dome-like structure and doesn't really have facets. It has mm -hmm. a flat side. Yep. and then a dome on it. 
Do you find um, that these cabochons are going to be more of lower qualities, essentially? Because I feel like I don't see them as much for high, high quality gemstones, because it doesn't, in my opinion, I mean, this is opinion, right? My preference <laughs> is that it doesn't show really the beauty of the stone as much if it's not faceted. Well, not necessarily, okay. because most of the time when you see cabochon sapphires, they're going to have asterism, so a okay. star sapphire, mm -hmm. or they're going to have a uh, cat's eye effect. Okay. or a trapeze. So all those are um, uh, phenomenon that you can see on sapphires. If you have a star on a sapphire like this cabochon, it's gonna be a higher price than a normal cabochon. Okay. So some people are really looking for those especially because it's rarer than a um, simple faceted mm -hmm. stone. But like on that note, I feel like gemstones is one of the things that like, even though it may not be, for example, the most expensive sapphire, you can still fall in love with the gemstone of course. for its uniqueness, you know what I mean? It's not like a diamond that the higher the quality, the more expensive, the better. You can love a lower quality sapphire, maybe of a lesser intense blue, but love that more. A so. sapphire stays a sapphire. Mm -hmm. it, can, it, it can be lower quality for someone else and it can be higher quality for you. You can find a sapphire that fits for you. Yeah. And that's the difference. 100%. Uh, where diamonds, you just choose a D color uh, with a VS <laughs> yeah. quality. It's not the same. It doesn't have the same personality. You know. Yeah, I've actually even had people ask me f specifically to see small inclusions within the stone because exactly. they thought that it felt more like natural. It felt more unique um, than having like a really high quality in terms of uh, clarity. Inclusions in sapphires and in gemstones in general, as long as they are small and not dangerous, they're yeah. important mm -hmm. because it can tell you that the stone is natural that it's yours, that it wasn't switched on, or that you yeah. didn't lose it, yeah. uh, it can tell you a lot. I also wanted to show just um, that you can also see melee sapphires. Yeah. So those are the smallest sapphires that you just put on jewelry as accessories, mm -hmm. not necessarily as a main stone. Uh, you can have um, as small as 0 0.7 millimeters in melee yeah. sapphires. Mm -hmm. So it re you can really have some small stones and as big as, let's say, this 5.5 carats. Yeah, and like we have a very good example here. It's not um, set in jewelry yet, but it can give you a good eye for like what you can do with pavé in terms of sapphires because they range in such wide colors. You can have like full uh, uh, degradé, like yeah. full spectrums of different shades and hues that can create a really nice piece in the end. So um, in sapphires, you can have treatments. Yeah. Uh, most of the time, 97% of the sapphires are going to be heat treated, mm -hmm. and that's okay. Yeah. It does doesn't do anything for the value. Now, if you have a big sapphire that is not heated, mm -hmm. then that ups the value. Yeah. So it doesn't change if it's heated, but it changes if it's not. So you can have treatments of beryllium, you can have heat treatments, and you can have uh, glass-filled sapphires, okay. amongst other treatments. Okay. Um, the ones that are accepted are the heat treatment. Yeah. That's it. And the heat treatments are really going to be to enhance the color, whether mm -hmm. it's going to be darken it or lighten it, essentially. People don't really care most of the time yeah. if it's heated or not. It's mm -hmm. still a natural gemstone, it just went into a big microwave. Yeah. So okay. you just heated your food, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> In terms of the filled one, that mm -hmm. is a faux pas. That is yeah. not accepted. Okay. If you don't tell your client that it's glass filled, and if you don't know about it and you learn about it later on, then it's something that you can attack the jewelry on, and mm -hmm. even anyone that sells you the gemstone. Yeah. So um, that's a faux pas in the gemology world. Yeah. So anything that is beryllium treated, that is radiated, and that is glass filled, mm -hmm. it's a no no as long as you don't say it. Yeah. If you say it, uh, I'm going to sell you this stone, it's glass filled, mm -hmm. that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. As long as the client knows about it, because if afterwards you uh, buy a stone, mm -hmm. you're going to make a certificate out of it. And yeah. on the certificate, it's going to say a composite gemstone with some sapphire. You're okay. not even going to have a sapphire certificate with it. OK, so yeah. it's not going to be worth. It's going to be worth five dollars, whereas not treated would have been worth five hundred dollars. Yeah. So it's a mm -hmm. big difference in prices. And I'm guessing that um, this treatment essentially is to cover the clarity, right? It's to fill in the imperfections within the gemstone. Exactly. Yeah. So you, you put lead glass in the imperfections and the fissures in the stone to hide them. Okay. So you don't really know about it, but maybe your sapphire has three fissures mm -hmm. all across from it, and maybe one hit and you're going to break it in three pieces. Okay. So it's really it's really not good for the integrity of the stone, all in all. Yeah. Exactly. Because I think they when, when they fill with high lead content, it's because it has a higher refraction, so I guess it hides those inclusions. It's like an illusion. Yeah. It's when you, when you break glass uh, in your car, mm -hmm. on your window car, and they fill it with a 
uh, product uh, that is colorless and you don't see it anymore. Mm -hmm. It's exactly that. So it yeah. hides the defect. Okay. But obviously when you're working with um, somebody like Lariane, when we buy our gemstones, they're all verified. So you really want to make sure that you are going to a good source. If ever you are not sure, you can always ask to have it evaluated with like GIA or there are also local evaluators. Um, genuinely what happens is you want to buy it, um, you want to have it evaluated from the person you don't buy it from. So it's not biased. <laughs> That's what it comes down to, right? If, if, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you can have a GIA, Lotus Gemology, you have a FG, uh, FG labs also. You have all sorts of labs internationally mm -hmm. or locally that, yeah. have, that can test your stone. And that's because there are a lot of treated gemstones, mm -hmm. imitations, uh, uh, and synthetics. Sapphire, let's remind ourselves, is one of the big four. So, of yeah. course, it's going to be plenty of imitations and synthetics on the market. Yeah. So if you see a price that is too good to be true, then most likely it's too good to be true. Do you want <laughs> me to show you uh, the examples right yeah, now? Yeah, we have some examples of some synthetic stones on the market. Okay, so this is a synthetic sapphire rough, and uh, you call it a bull. A bull. A bull. Uh, this is the Verneuil method. Okay. So you have a lot of different methods for synthetics. Essentially, it's exactly the same chemical composition and the same hardness. Mm -hmm. So it's exactly the same as a natural sapphire, except it was grown in a lab. Yeah. And that's a problem for a lot of people because if you don't really know about gemology and how to study gemstones, you won't be able to tell the difference. Mm -hmm. So if you come across, or if you think you've come across a synthetic sapphire, that one, I would say, verified it in a lab or with a gemologist because you can have some rough with that and synthetic yeah. that are formed afterwards after the bull. They yeah. can also make every color. Yeah. And that's dangerous. And unless you you studied in gemstones, you won't mm -hmm. be able to tell the difference. Yeah. It's the same way. It's the same chemical composition, the same colors, everything. It's really hard to tell. That's why, like, you need somebody who's trained eye, and like, she's gonna go in with her microscope essentially because she'll be able to really tell that, like, the the, the inclusion, the composition as well, right? Like, exactly. the structure, molecular structure, I suppose. Yep. So um, one of the most basic thing we learn in school is the pattern, the growth pattern of mm -hmm. the sapphire. So it's the composition of it. When it's in nature, you can see the pattern that is in hexagonal shape. Yeah. And you can see in the structure, even if it's faceted, mm -hmm. you can see in the structure hexagonal growth mm -hmm. of the crystal. If you see in the um, synthetic, you won't have that hexagonal growth. You'll yeah. have a sort of rainbow-shaped growth. Okay. Like this, in a dome. Yeah. And you'll see it repeated uh, in the stone. And it's hard to see. Mm -hmm. So you really have to have a trained eye to see it. And I think also, what is a side note which is really cool, um, is that I think the same stone, depending on where it was formed, will actually have different inclusions as well. Exactly. So like emeralds from different areas, she'll be able to tell based off of like the structure in which it grew. grew. Exactly. So if you go to a lab, let's yeah. say GIA, and you say you want an origin report mm -hmm. on your gemstone, they'll be able to tell, determining by the, 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 the inclusions and the aspect of the gemstone and the color and everything, mm -hmm. from which country it is. So depending on the country, uh, I mean, Kashmir mm -hmm. sapphire will be much more valuable on paper than, let's say, a sapphire from um, Thailand. Yeah. So, uh, there are some, sp uh, some places where it's legendary. Yeah where you've known there are sapphires for hundreds of years. Like the reputations. The reputation is not the same. You also have some imitations that are easier to tell. Yeah. And you have some glass imitations. Um, those are easier to tell because you'll have some abrasions on the facets uh, because it's less hard than mm -hmm. sapphire. Glass is usually, and glass and plastic are usually six to seven in hardness, where okay. sapphires we said earlier are nine. Yeah. So they'll be more used up and the, they'll be harder to the touch. Yeah. Because a natural crystal and synthetic will be colder to the touch. Okay. And some of them will have a weird backing like that. That tells you, honestly, quickly <laughs> enough yeah. that it's plastic and imitation. Yeah. And then you have the CZ, the cubic zirconium, uh, that can have any kind of color also, mm -hmm. and will often imitate sapphires and rubies. Yeah. It's going to be cold. It's heavy. Yeah. It's way heavier than any gemstone. Yeah, you really feel it. You feel the difference in weight. So that's one yeah. of the clues. And then it shines way brighter than mm -hmm. any other gemstone too. It shines brightly like a diamond. Yeah. And sapphire will not shine like a diamond most of the time. 
Yeah, I feel like, especially the bigger you go in terms of, like, synthetic, like, CZ or moissanite, it just doesn't flare like a natural gemstone. It, it doesn't has, feel right. It has a synthetic look to it. All right, so let's talk a little bit about prices, um, just in terms of, like, uh, diamond alternatives. So let's say white sapphires. Uh -huh. Um, because if you're looking at a, a one carat diamond, you can get it as low as 6,000, you can go over 12, depending on the quality. Um, versus if you're looking at a white sapphire, you're looking more at like... $200 maybe for a one carat. So it's really not the same game. And you have yeah. a lot of brilliance and you have a good hardness to the stone. So it's really a good option uh, if you don't want to pick diamonds. Yeah, exactly. And um, it's still really beautiful. And honestly, guys, if ever you guys are thinking about something a little bit of a lower price point, then I still suggest going natural gemstone because it will be worth more over the time versus synthetic. Exactly. Uh, so when you want to have a jewelry made for you, uh, maybe later on you're going to want to give it to your children and, ha and uh, keep the jewel in your family. Yeah. And having that made with synthetic, mm -hmm. I mean, it's just not the same thing. It's not going to have yeah. the same value. And then you have the same thing with the black sapphires. So you have black diamonds and then black sapphires. Yeah. And black sapphires are also going to be a fraction of the price. So this one is going to be maybe, what, 100 bucks, 200 bucks, uh, yeah. bucks if you have a high quality one yeah. or a big one. And I mean, it's going to be black. It's the same yeah, color. Exactly. And actually, what's really fun about it is um, if you look at black diamond, um, it has a very metallic hue to it. But black sapphire is a jet black. And so there's no metallic hue, which I find generally looks a little bit more masculine. And so if you still want a black stone, um, this is a great option. And it looks killer in yellow gold. Having been in the jewelry industry for quite a while now, I feel like whenever I see gemstones, it's so much more personal, it's so much more artistic, it's so much more life in it versus looking at like a boring diamond. I feel like I'm over it, I don't know. <laughs> exactly, and I mean, so, they all have their personality. Yeah. Color gemstones, along with their inclusions, their size, their shape, you're gonna find something for you. Okay, and then you have uh, the Montana Sapphire. So, as you can see, it's not the best uh, looking sapphire, let's say, in terms of quality and color, uh, mm -hmm. but it has a very different, uh, very special hue. It has some inclusions and it's a bit milky. But since it's a Montana sapphire and it's a ma American made stone, uh, then it's going to be more expensive. So, yeah. that's the difference. It's considered an ethical gemstone. Mm -hmm. um, so, maybe this one is going to be uh, maybe around 200, 300 for stone, and the same quality and same color from Mogok is going to be. $50 a stone just yeah. because it's not as ethical as the American one mm -hmm. and this can be due to factors for example um, their working conditions right their their laborers could be paid at higher rates than for the example, recycled water Thailand um, yeah you have a lot of restrictions in Montana you can't mm -hmm. mine everywhere you want you have mm -hmm. some restricted areas where you have to mine and then you have to pay your miners you have to recycle the water yeah. You have to replant trees afterwards. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of restrictions that make the stone more expensive. And yeah. that's okay. Mm -hmm. That's also a type of gemstone that people love, even if they're included. A lot of people do want the more ethical, but let me remind you, just because it's coming from any other mine doesn't mean that they're not ethical, okay? Like exactly. It, it can be coming from Vietnam, Thailand, wherever, and still be coming from ethical mines. So you just need to ask your gemstone dealer. They will know where they're coming from for the most part. I'd of say. course, and even so in Vietnam, you have some family-owned mines. Uh, exactly. It doesn't mean that it's unethical. It's just mm -hmm. that it's only the family that works there and sell the gemstones themselves. Yeah. So it's it's considered ethical by all means. Mm -hmm. It's just not the same way that we work here. Is it I think it is. Yeah, I think it is. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, obviously leave them down below. We'll be happy to answer them. Um, I will leave her website in the link. So if you guys want to check her out, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Thank you.